All right, we're ready to go. Part two to this thing. Um, in part one, we talked about, uh, just to recap, how to capture the essence of the shapes, understanding like the basic forms. Um, I also want you guys to, uh, if you're going to follow along, is download the brushes. Um, the way you get those, I didn't show you last time, but you go to shaddyconceptart.com, which should be here on the bottom, um, and you click on brushes. And then you just click on this link right here, Safadi Brush File. And it downloads an ABR file that goes into your uh, that goes into your brush set, and then it will replace your brushes with uh, these brushes. And I don't want you to use any other brushes besides these if you're trying to follow along, because these are the best brushes. Um, and they're set up exactly the way they are on that file. All right, so next step on this painting is we got all the basics in there, and now we're going to focus on, uh, let's see, getting some of the beautiful shapes that are in here. And, and what that involves first, first, is looking. And that's the number one thing nobody does, because everyone's so anxious to get to their painting that they don't bother to look. So what we're going to do is we're going to just look for a second. Um, before I, you noticed, I did that red chicken scratch to show you what the essence of the object is. And now we're going to get into the essence just a little bit more, like break it down. Make another layer here for the, for the red mark making that I'm going to make. Turn that one off. And just... I'm, right now, I'm telling you what's going on in my mind again, but I'm going to show you with the red. The red is my mind. I'm just saying, all right, light is coming kind of from above, kind of like that, right? And this rock is kind of lumpy. The nature of it is kind of round and lumpy, and it's got all these little bumps. Now, I can already tell you right now, just from experience, that I'm not going to get into all these little bumps, I'm going to try to stop, like maybe do a few of them, but I'm not going to get into all of them. And this is not a superb picture. It's an okay picture. So you lose a lot of the detail in the shadows. Um, but you have a decent amount. Um, and I'm just kind of getting an idea of like there's a lot of round shapes, how light is hitting it. And now actually looking at it closer, I didn't even notice this before because I wasn't looking closely enough, is this rock right here is separate. It's a separate rock from the one behind it. And this one's actually darker and so the light hitting it doesn't even get as bright. You can see the water kind of goes in behind this rock a little bit. And it's coming from this side, splashing up on this rock a little bit. Getting a little bit of these tenderly little shapes, which are really nice. And then there's these watery glints that are just from reflections from the sun. So take some time. You know, get in there and look at it. Um, and we're not going to get to color yet. All we're going to do is... From far away, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to say to myself, all right, let's 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 finesse this silhouette. And we're going to start with this one since it's the focal point. And still thinking about the essence. By the way, when you, when you make a mark and hit undo, it undoes your layer selection. The most annoying thing in the history of the universe. I've emailed Adobe about it every single time they come out with a new version. And they tell me absolutely nothing. I pay someone $100 for that plugin, by the way. A plugin that could prevent that. So that I don't click here, make a mark, undo, undoes my fucking layer selection. You know what I'm saying? Programmers, $100 just for that plugin. Anywho, so uh, I made this initially really loosely, but now I'm going to be tr a little more true to its essence. And I think I kind of want it to be more like how it is. I notice there's a notch there, but I'm going to leave that out for now. Uh, you'll notice I switched to uh, Color Picker because I have Alt on my Cintiq um, as one of the hotkeys. My hotkeys are Alt, Undo, Redo, Grabby Hand. And actually, let's go back here for a second. Here's my Intuo setup. Um, I'm not going to go through it here because it takes a, a little while. But notice if I have, if you have an Intuos 4, you have four buttons on top, four buttons on bottom. The top one is Alt, Control Alt Z, Control Shift Z, Spacebar. Shift, radio menu, F, control, M. Now, in my classes, I force people to do this. Now, some of you have your own way of doing it that you like. Fuck your way. That's all I'm saying. Just fuck your way. My way's better. Do it my way. Because when you're working outside on a laptop, you don't want to go into your keyboard, and this is all the buttons you need because they're all the buttons I need. Right? Obviously. So if, I'm, if it's good for me, it must be good for everyone else in the history of the world, right? All right, there's been an occasional student that needs a right click or someone that needs a right click. If you need your fucking precious right click, you can put it somewhere. But you can't put it on the zoom because the zoom is the up and down of your pen, control minus, control equal. So go through, set up your buttons exactly like this. If you want to get into the radial menu, you can. 
for more advanced stuff, but you don't need to. The main things you need, even if you have an Intuos 3 from medieval times, is Control Alt Control Z Shift Z Spacebar, and in those exact places. And when you start getting a workflow that has these buttons, you'll know why. Um, and on the Intuos 3, you need to do the brackets to make your brush size up and down. Um, yeah, definitely at least try it like that. Play around with it. See if you like it. You, I think eventually you will start to like it. And that's available right here on brushes on my site, the explanation of how to do all that. All right. Because, yeah, I noticed that, you know, you'll notice here it's constantly just going to color picker. And you're like, how's that happening? Well, I'm off camera. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing alt button. All right. So I'm going to change this picture. Like, this goes all the way to the end. I'm going to explain to you my thoughts. But, like, I don't want anything. You don't want anything kind of butting right up against the edge. You want to you give yourself some breathing room. Um, like now you might not hear me talk for a minute because it's impossible to talk and make do anything of substance all the sexy initial stuff yeah you can like explain it all and talk about it but if you're really getting some work done you kind of have to focus on it Now, even though this is a comp, I want to get in there and do everything that I'm going to have in the final silhouette. So, even though this is a comp, I'm not. There's nothing in this that I'm not going to include. Okay, that's kind of above the horizon. I'm noticing actually that maybe this entire thing, maybe I'm going to cut that notch out. And notice, I, I try to do like a couple small shapes and then a big swooping shape. So even though this has a lot of little bumps in it, I'm not going to concern myself with all of them. I'm going to try to kind of say, essence-wise, what are the what are the essential bumps that I need? Now, the thing about doing demos like this is everybody says the exact same things. But what it comes down to is the decisions you actually make. Because everyone will be like, you need some areas of rest, you need some areas of detail, you need blah, 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 you need composition, avoid the edges. But... The, the actual on-the-field, day-to-day decisions you make, that's what's determining um, your sensibility. And that's neither here nor there. I'm just telling you information. Um, I feel like this whole rock is probably slightly higher up because this notch is kind of not in the same place as that notch. So I'm going to use Photoshop again because it's the program I'm using to go ahead and Photoshop it. I'm going to move that up just a smidge, a smidge will tin. And I have my white thing. I, don't, I usually can see the layers without labeling them, but some people, and rightly so, like to name their layers. I just don't feel like it. I never feel like it. But it's a good idea. Do as I say, not as I say to do. OK, so let's see. Mm. Yeah, that's probably a little closer. Now that notch is in the right spot. And that little notch we had in the first one is actually a whole other object. Okay, now I'm kind of turning my body a little bit because I want to get... And just like we were doing before, I'm, I'm, do, I'm, I'm painting past what I want. And then I'm cutting it out. I'm not just painting... Um, exactly to the edge. I'm painting past it a little bit. If I want to do that indication of that wave, you'd be like, well, that's kind of detailed. I know. Like I said, this is it. This is our final silhouette. We're finishing one thing at a time. This, is, this whole process is a matter of finishing everything as you go so that you can focus on one thing at a time. So I might do that for that stroke, and then it comes in again. And then it comes down, and then I go in with the brush. I'm constantly going brush and erase. There might be a hotkey setup that could help me with that, huh? But I don't know what it is right now. Um, I would even say maybe I'm going in with erase and a little bit of the, my leaf brush. I know, scary to get into that much detail. But it's still just erase and dark, so I'm okay with it. Go back to Daniels. 
And the reason I called it Leaf Brush is because it is called Deep Leaf Brush. It's, it's the only brush, that and Cloud Brush. I was going to give them clever names, but I'm like, no, you know what? I'm not trying to complicate things. I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible. So if it's obviously a certain kind of brush and I name it Garuth, it's, people are just going to call it the fucking Leaf Brush. So let's just stick with that. Um, now, one of the things I like to do, too, is keep an artist's work that I'm trying to copy. Okay, so in this case, I pulled up this piece. This is a Jamie Jones piece. Um, he's the greatest digital painter in the history of the world so far. And I'm looking at his mark making, especially here. This is called the juice, by the way. <laughs> this is called this is called the makes you want to quit art. If you look at this and you don't want to quit art, that means you really, really suck because you don't even you don't you, have, you don't even have the concept of what's good. This right here is. A magical festival for the eyes and I think it's important to have a, a person's art up even in your file I'll put it in my file in a little bit um, in the same file so you can have a look at it in fact let's do that right now copy paste it again above each other is the best way so you can like have them on top of each other and that'll be good I can turn that off and on um, but it's important to have one person's art that you're copying every time you're trying to get better. If you're trying to get better, if you're trying to stay the same suckiness you are now, then just don't bother. Find your own path through it. But the process of getting better at art is only appearing to be better, right? It's only appearing. No one's ever seen someone else's great brushwork and be like, wait a second, <laughs> that's not your brushwork. I recognize that brushwork. No one's ever done that in the history of art. You see awesome shit and you say, holy crap, you have suddenly achieved goodness. No one cares how you got there. And in fact, copying people is almost, I think, the only way to get better fast. Now, you want to learn all your own lessons and spend 30 years, you know, getting good? That's not what Jamie did. He studied masters. He looked at master paintings and was like, what are they doing? I'm going to do that. That looks good. And keep in mind, with art, it's not about being good. It's just about looking like you're good. The whole thing is looking. There's nothing else besides what it looks like. So if you can fake it, then you've achieved it. There's only faking it. There isn't anything else. This is a visual, superficial looking medium. There is no soul underneath this painting. It's a literal painting. You have a soul when you're making marks, but if you see someone else who has an incredible rich way of making marks and you can capture that to understand the essence of the object and make it your own, and incidentally, you will make it your own. There's nothing you can do to not make it your own. You did it. So inherently, your, uh, your doing of it will be uh, will change it. And if it doesn't, if you're just a rip off of somebody else and that's your career, well, we're not in, a career, we're not in an art career anyway. This, this whole business is about beauty, this whole concept art game. If you're a fine artist and you're trying to revolutionize the world of art, then you're in the wrong field. Because this is just beauty masturbation. That's what this career is, this career path. And that's what this outdoor painting thing is. That's why it's not, you know, it's not respected in the art world anymore. It was at the turn of the century, but it's not anymore. You don't go to the MoCA and see landscape painting. You see it as an antiquated sort of pretty thing that people did before contemporary art came on the scene, which is fine. Now, there's those of us who uh, love beauty so much that we don't care. We'll just keep doing it forever. I don't care if it's in fashion or not. I don't give a shit. I just like waterfalls and rainbows. That's what I like. And I like rocks and I like pretty waves. And I like epic shit. Is it high art? No, it's not high art. It's just retarded. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily say anything except for that the world is beauty or beautiful and be in the present moment. I'm sure a lot of people have opinions about, uh, oh, no, it is or it isn't. But who really cares? If you like making pretty things, make pretty things. But um, then don't talk shit about Thomas Kincaid because that's all he does, too. But he's dead now. Is it okay to talk shit about him now that he's dead? He really sucked. That shit was horrific. Everybody knows that. It's not even cool to hate Thomas Kincaid because he's so awful and so bashed. I almost want to like him. It's like that guy who likes Britney Spears. Anywho, I'm trying to work out the bottom of this shape in a sexy way. Now, I want this shape to have rhythm. And I'm going to turn this back on. There's something about the rhythm of these shapes that I find just beautiful, especially in here. Um, it's the arrangement of small and big rocks. Um,
And you know what? I think part of it is that 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 wave is just lackluster. And really what it needs to do, it needs to like froth up a little bit more. Yeah, that wave actually, now if I'm just thinking energy wise and not about what's there, then I feel like, what kind of energy do I want from this? I kind of want some, I want some more movement and energy kind of going that direction. And sometimes I'll do a Daniels in and out a race so that I can get that movement. The bottoms of things is super critical. You make it too high, too low, take a sip of my Diet Coke. Make it too high, too low, it totally breaks the perspective. I'm checking back in with my painting. You know, and I might move that wave down a little bit so that I give myself a little room because it is kind of weirdly tangent. Am I happy with my big over shape? You know what? I think this is kind of maybe misplaced a little bit. I'm going to do that. To gasps and dismay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, mess that up. Move it over. Fill it in. Done and done. Now, this thing is my main shape that I want, so I'm going to experiment with a few things. Definitely all these bumps are not quite necessary. What are the... What would be the coolest, kind of sexiest, flowiest? Like a whooshing. I'm kind of thinking sound effects. Stops here. That's the stopper. You know what I mean? Of that rhythm. You know, does that make any sense? Is that, that I'm going to make a stopper to that rhythm? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm just like... Saying, what do I kind of feel in my emotions that I want for right there? Is that sexier than that? I think so. I think it's a little sexier. I like that long, quiet area that I built right there. And if I'm going to render it later, I'll have to think of how I'm going to do that in a way that, that still is true to that rock. I want to be true to the rock. So that's the whole thing. It's a balance. How true do you stay to the thing, and how much do you stylize it? How much can you get away with? The farther you can push it and still have it be true, the more appearance of goodness you will have at art. And again, that's all you're doing is appearing to be good. Yeah, maybe all these little shapes here are a little bit distracting. They're kind of, you know, in my mind, just like I was showing you an example last time, that one shape that I put here, in my mind, you're thinking about it constantly, like what shapes are taking away from what other shapes? And what's my focal point? I want to keep my eye in here. So that if you have a lot of little shapes, make, them make a couple next to each other, and then they kind of all go away. You know, this kind of, this whole thing goes back a little bit or should go back a little bit more. And I'm, you know, like I said, you notice how much time I'm spending on this. That whole, I get a lot done in one video, those days are over. Because the real time now is spent doing very little. Again, painted through it, but going back in and erased it. That's the only way I was going to get that. To a sign! That's what you want. And once you sp spend this much time on this part of it, on just silhouettes, later you will kind of understand, oh my god, that is super handy that I sorted that out. Because I am, like, done. You know, I don't like that curving in so much. Maybe that. Is that acceptable? Let's see, what else is... Let's have another close look. Okay, shallow rocks here going up into this foreground rock. 
it's actually passing in front of this farther back rock. I don't know if I'm even going to include both rocks, but should I? And, you know, maybe I need to pull this forward a little bit. show that little rock that's I think that's a nice one because here so it, it's just there's no room for error you think I'm painting loosely and I am in some ways because I'm just silhouetting but on the bottoms of these things there's no room for error because this thing's got to be just the right amount in front of that thing to make it feel like it's in perspective you got to be a Nazi about this about your perspective and about your about where your lines are especially where they touch water where rocks get in the water or rocks get in the sand um, and I like that those couple rocks up there are all that I have, and um, and then they kind of end right down here too. All right. All right, so maybe I styled that shape a little better, and it's final, right? I'm probably not going to do much else to it. What if I get crazy? Copy, paste. What if I do that? Nope. I don't like that. But as a little experiment, just to see what can I do to the shape to make it kind of better and more sexy. Um, I like that this whole side is higher. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of happy with it. So I'm going to make another layer on top of it, like I did right here. And this is important. Pay attention to this. This is a clipping mask. You hold the Alt button, and when you hold the Alt button, the same thing that does the uh, color picker, and you and you mouse over in right in between, this little white box comes up, and you click. Now this layer is clipped to that layer. And what that means is if I were to take a lighter color, let's say like a lighter gray, and paint, not a race, but paint, that whatever I paint on this layer is not going to go outside the boundaries of the layer below it. So it cl it's called a clipping mask. It's like saying this silhouette is what is blocking everything that's clipped to it, which is great because then I can paint another layer on top like that and get in there. And what I'm going to do now is paint that light layer. And actually, one of the ways I'll do this is I'll paint this entire level, layer gray like this. Maybe darken it a little bit. I'm doing Control U on my keyboard to darken it a tad. Turn it off and on. And then I will make a layer mask. I'm going to show you two things that I use all the time, which is this little this little button right here. And what that does is it creates a layer mask onto the clipping mask. Now, layer mask can be created onto any layer. But this is a layer mask on a clipping mask. And what that does is it creates a white layer here that if you paint in black, you can only paint in black and white on it. If you paint in black, it erases that layer. If you paint in white, it brings it back. So what it allows you to do is cut, cut out of this shape without actually erasing. Again, black is what erases. So what I might do is to start is just kind of from far away, Say, what are the shapes, what are the general shapes of light and dark? And I'm deciding what is light, what is dark. That's it. I'm not, um, there's no grays. I'm just saying the same as I did the silhouette of the big object, what is the silhouette of the sun shape, the light hitting its shape? And we're going to style that shit on its own. Take our time. Got all day. Got nothing to do besides drink this Diet Coke.
and I can't even mess it up because and again I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna put everything in there and understand what the essence of it is again we go we went back here we decided to some degree that generally there was a lot of round there's a straight some straight shapes here and there's some round bulbousy shapes and there's this little sliver that comes down this sliver goes down like that some straights and then some round bulbousy shapes all right so again not going to the layer itself going to the mask painting in black to erase and sometimes as long as you're kind of going the general direction of what's happening like you know these are getting a lot quite a bit of shadows underneath them and you notice how far away I am when I do it because I don't want to get caught up right now in the little bits I want to just kind of focus on the big shapes and I want to put them generally I'm going back to white white brings it back And you know it gets it gets faint, but I'm deciding what's white, what's black. Going back to the black that erases and erasing. I'm just kind of looking at it and saying, all right, where are the bits? And I'm thinking about how I'm gonna how I'm styling this shape too separately, bringing back some of the. Now I changed the shape of this so it can't quite be how it is there, right? Because I'm changing it a little bit, but. And you might notice, well, some of these strokes are kind of sloppy, but that's okay, because I'm just trying to get, like, the energy, basically, of what's happening there. Let's see how the light is hitting that. Well, it's blocked by this one. There's a lot of cool shapes in there. And now the erase is all critical, because you see these... These little ends of Daniels, these little ends, I don't like seeing that. That stuff is just gross. I like to erase out, even if it's just a matter of just willy-nilly erasing out like that, even if it's a matter of like not even really knowing or caring where the erase out is. But you want, with Daniels, you want an erase out and a cut in, always. You don't want one by itself, because one by itself is clumsy shapes. Now, because this black and white thing can be analog, I'm going here to Tyrion Lannister, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start getting crazy, and start even doing some soft edges. Tyrion Lannister is a nice, if you need help with that, he's right here, Tyrion Lannister, and that guy, unassuming but useful, because he's got a little bit of texture, a little bit of texture, but not too much. And you see, I'm still in the layer mask. The layer mask understands every manner of gray. So I, I can just, I can love on this all day and night. Oh, see, I missed out on that big shape. Oh, and I forgot about my boy, McNulty. Oh, where have you been, buddy? McNulty is just the best brush ever. I can't believe I forgot about him. Look at McNulty. He's epic. McNulty already has, like, a very nice, natural, rocky feel. He can be really thin and beautiful. He can also be kind of like block in and loose. He can look like trees. He can look like shrubbery. He can be rock. He can be clouds. It really is the greatest brush of all time. So, now I see like a bunch of little bit of texture right there. So I'm just going to try to mimic it by doing like a, a little bit of crisscross. Once I kind of know what's happening, I don't need to, to draw it exactly. I can just kind of get it in there. You know, I see a couple. And I'm not scared. Do you know what I mean? A lot of times, the, the advantage of working this way is you can work without fear. Because the fear in your feeble fucking heart is what causes you to make shitty paintings because you don't have the guts to go in there and just 
make bold marks, make mistakes, go back, change it again, make mistakes. The more bold you can feel when you're working, the more uh, fresh your painting will look. If your painting has a lot of belabored strokes, and that, I think, is what sucks about Kincaid the most. May he rest in the pits of hell or whatever as he is, his made-up heaven, um, is that um, you, his stuff was so belabored. It didn't have any confident mark-making. All his marks were feeble because he rendered everything. He didn't just let anything be. He didn't know how to let anything be because he didn't have it in his heart. He's a feeble-hearted motherfucker. Didn't he die of alcoholism or something? I don't know. I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, I'm going to burn in hell for sure. All right, let's see. Going back to this. Oh, McNulty. I forgot how, how delightful this brush is. By the way, if you're spending less time than me on this, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Um... Everyone who does beautiful natural paintings that look like they spent no time on it actually spent more time on it. You spend more time on things to make it look like you spend less time on it. That is the hidden secret of fresh, loose-looking paintings, is that it actually takes longer to make a painting look like you spend less time on it. Um, if you read one of Sargent's books, I never read his books. I'm not that studious. I don't have like an oak library with tomes of Sargent's books that I'm reading by, by fireplace light. But I think I opened and peeked into one for a second. And the page I read was how he was painting the paint onto the brushes that he would paint with. So he would pick a, take a brush, and he would actually paint on that brush with another brush the exact paint he wanted. And so that he could lay it down, and it would have the perfect mark that would have a blend of colors in it. I'm like, holy shit. And this is after he'd already done the painting. Take a total Tyrion Lannister here. Yeah, Tyrion Lannister's got all kinds of grays. And I can see the, those all those gradients that are in there. I mean, I don't need to get too crazy for this demo. But um, part of it is that you just have to love these shapes. Like, when I look at this, when I look at all this, I'm a little bit aroused. I'll be honest with you. I look at these shapes and I'm like, oh, just, oh. And I can't even see the textures because this fucking picture's too low res. But if I was there, I would just be like, look at all the juice, the rhythms, the, the, the changes in light and color, the texture, the subtleties. Like, I love the subtleties. I love the changes and the feeling of this rock. I don't expect you to have that right, out, right away. I don't think a lot of people do, but that's what allows you to put it in because you can't not put it in. You have no other option. You're like, I have to have this rock texture in there because that's how much I care about it. And I want it in there. This painting is not going out the door without this stupid rock texture in there. And once you become that sort of psychopath, it is psychotic. I mean, it's a little bit psychotic, obviously, because, I mean, who gives a shit? But um, once you become kind of like that, everything becomes more fun. Because getting into shit is fun. Becoming crazy about stuff is sort of fun. And also, this is the part that's yours. This is the part that's not the client. The client doesn't necessarily care about this stuff that much. They recognize real. They recognize when the piece is awesome. So in that regard, they recognize it, and they'll pay you more because you got way better, and now you get better clients that pay you more. So in that regard, they will. But day to day, no, no one's going to know. No one knows. This is just for you and your art nerd friends to get excited about. And let's check in with Shemmy Shones. How does it compare? I'm probably adding more detail than he ha than he is, but I don't know. I like the way that these edges turn, and these little slivers in here are kind of similar-ish. That's good. Okay, with that. Um, And I'm, I'm, again, I'm cutting in, cutting out. We started with Daniels, now I'm with McNulty. And it looks like I'm just randomly making shapes, which a lot of people do. But think about the way the copying, first you can just copy the shadow light, but then understand what the turn of the forms actually is. Understand that, like, these forms are turning. 
and this is a rock shape. Once you know that that's, this is a rock shape like that, then when you know that and you have it in your mind hole, you go back here and you can understand, oh, well, oh, oh, that actually turns down. Just from me looking at it right now, I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe actually I'm on the, I'll make sure I'm on the layer mask. You got to make sure you're on that thing because you can see the little brackets will be on different things and you want to be on the layer mask painting in black because black is a race. Oh, the undo. And I saw I click on the side here so that my first undo doesn't go back. Okay. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, in the next session, we're going to keep on styling and talk about color. Thanks for listening.